So I've got about four more ponds I really need to check and make sure that they're all in the clear. So we can get them out on some new pasture that has never had bison on it. And now we've got to let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes while the chemical reaction happens. I guess it's a blood poison if there is any in the blue green algae pack. How's it going, Bucket Man? Yeah, I'm so we go grind. Hey guys, Dusty Becker across Summers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for watching our bison channel. I had to get some more feed. These are our 20% cattle cubes. You see me feed to the bison all the time. One of the reasons I'm getting this or prepping the big Joe herd to release them out into their new ungrazed, first time ever bison pasture. It's a uh, pastures three and four. I'm about to wrap it up on getting it all tied up together and finished, which is very, very exciting. Uh, the other exciting thing, we finally got some rain, which is so exciting. And it's amazing at how fast the grass turns green. It is, we, this place has been brown for over two months and ugly an ugly brown but with just a little bit of rain it has turned it green a little bit and some of you are like really is that green dusty well you know there's places here and there where um i may not show you everything but there is some green here i promise you other good news is we got more coming so with that rain coming out we still have to give out hay and still do those kind of things with all that said uh, i've had a lot going on with all the prusic acid and nitrate stuff um, here in the past couple of weeks. Here it is right here. What's been going on in the Cross Timbers Bison Ranch. One of the things about uh, the summertime that's great having these ponds is when it's so hot like it was this summer. Yes, we went about 70 days without hardly any rainfall at all. Um, it gets very hot. We had over 100 degree temperature days. So 
for them to come in here and cool off is awesome uh, because it does get so hot here. Um, and these animals can handle it. But what we're gonna do is, one of the things I was concerned about um, was the water. And so that's why I started filling up water tanks from our rural water as soon as I could. So um, Cole got us a, a water test kit and it's basically uh, for, um, what did you say it was for? for nitrates, nitrites. Oh yeah, nitrate, uh, testing it, nitrite, um, CL2, total hardness, total, uh, I can never Alkalinity. Say yeah, carbonates and then pH level. When you look at this pond, you're like, man, that don't look very good. But, you know, that's why I started filling up water tanks for them because when ponds do get low and they start shrinking and, and, and losing all the water from the drought, I think they can get concentrated. I'm no water expert at all. So we're gonna take these little test strips uh, that Cole got. We're gonna take some tests of this pond, specifically where these yearlings are. And uh, I don't think this was the cause of her death, but we're gonna go ahead and test the water um, and see see what's going on with it. And maybe we can learn something from it. So with this specific test, we'll fill this vial up with water. And then what came with this is 100 strips. and it performs all these tests right here. So we'll fill this up with some palm water and then we'll put our strip in. Alright. Got us some good looking pond water. It said for 15 seconds. We'll have results. Yep. And then we'll have to compare it to the back of the bottle. Okay. Alright so we got some color results. Yep, now we need to compare it to the actual I think it's on yeah right there box here so the simplicity of this test after I got the sample of water we put this in for 15 seconds and then I basically just match it up right here and line it up to run our test and we just match our colors here so our pH is good it's in the okay um, and then one of the things that was high is carbonate now I'm not sure exactly what uh carbonate is but we are pretty much it looks like we're out of the okay uh portion it looks like our numbers are a little high there on the carbonate um alkalinity we're in the okay colors total hardness we're okay the very very light purple on that match and then cl2 low nitrates nothing nitrate nothing so we're good on what we thought could have been high and then uh so we need to figure out kind of what's going on and i'll just put my thumb on it but it is a high carbonate so that is interesting but um one of the things that going back and talking about nitrates and prusic acid and, and dealing with all this um nitrates can also come from fertilizing now that's something we don't do here and that's something that i read was people can have problems with nitrates with fertilizing uh, your land, your crops, and stuff like that. But we don't do that here. We don't fertilize our pastures and whatnot. So uh, the nitrate part on the fertilization would be out of the question, which makes a lot of sense here that there's not a lot of nitrates in the pond because if you do fertilize, um, some of your runoff can come down into your ponds, which could um, collect nitrates. So this test is good, it's simple, it's easy. We'll be able to test some other ponds just to check them. Um, and maybe one of the ponds that where the bison are actually going, we can check it too. But because those ponds haven't been touched, and this has, you can see there's been a lot of traffic in here. And um, that's just part of it. Just like animals in the wild, uh, they get in it, they play in it, they poop and pee in it. And, you know, every, everybody can go through droughts too. So this is just stuff that we have to do to make sure it's all okay. And just a, one more thing to check off the list of... Um, things that would be potentially harmful to our bison. Now that we got our test results, we're gonna do one more test um, here in a little bit. It's a blue-green algae. Um, but for now, we're gonna go back to fence building. We've got my nephew with me, Wes Cole, and uh, we're gonna go knock out this fence so that the big Joe herd, which is hanging out over there, can, uh, can move west and we can get him out on some new pasture that has never had bison on it. So we'll keep you updated with that, but Time to go grind. All 
All right, we're down here uh, working on a fence, like we have been a lot lately. Um, so we gotta go do some welding, so I'm gonna bring Cole with me to put on a gate, and then um, Wes is gonna do his favorite thing. He's gonna put clips on the fence for us. So he's gonna come through here and set the barbed wire, start putting these clips on for us, and then uh, basically the hard part is done. All the T-posts are driven, and uh, I've stretched a lot of um, barbed wire, and I still got to stretch quite a bit. That's what goes fast. Um, really, just put all the clips on, and then that's it. And I'll hang one more gate after uh, Cole and I hang a gate with the welder, and um, that should be pretty close to being it. Just standing in fire ants. Sorry, I looked down and I saw you. Oh, hey, buddy. You there? Yep. Good catch. Oh, well. <laughs> Oh, were, you still, were you still filming? Yeah, I'm still filming oh, all good. <laughs> Five minutes. Just wait for I'll kind of learn putting up gates learn the hard way but um here i've learned to get my gates very tight to your uh, hanging post here or where you wrap your chain around it post and what we'll do is build an h off that later because this h is not in good shape that already existed here it's seen better days filled with concrete at the top <laughs> anyways um we like to make our gaps pretty close this is probably a little tighter than i want it but like the bottom is good so we like them tight because you don't want to ever have an animal stick their head through there. So I get them as tight as I can, but still a little bit of wiggle room in case there's movement in the pipe once the fence is stretched. So now I've, I've got all this done already. Got our down brace right here. And then we'll basically just take the existing fence and we'll tie up to that post right there. And this fence is just pretty much it's okay to use. Uh, I had to tear part of it down just to put this up, but we'll take it and tie it up and um, this will pretty much be ready. This is our furthest north um, part of the property of this 40 acres, what I call pasture three and four, and it butts up to my neighbor here. And so I told him we're gonna put this uh, new H in and a new gate so that if bison ever got out or he needed in here or I needed in there whatever it's always good to have a gate especially if you do have animals that get out you don't want them to go through a fence and the best thing is corners so that's why we put our gate here in a corner plus it's just easier you're doing all your bracing anyways so you might as well put a gate we put a 10 foot gate here and I like to do that anytime we build a new fence you just never know when you need access there's a fire you know the fire truck needs quick access here he can go through my neighbor and get access here if they need to exit uh, there's a quick exit instead of going all the way through 80 acres they can come through 10 acres and get right here um, and then like I said if the bison get out you, it's easier to push bison into a corner instead of the middle of a fence row uh, if they ever did get out and you needed them to get back in so that's why we put gates it's extra work it's more money because you have to buy a gate but it's completely worth it we're uh, gonna go check on Wes and then we're gonna do the blue green algae test on uh, that pond it's a little bit more of an intense 
test is what it sounds like. Never done it before. Don't know what we're getting ourselves into. <laughs> it gets a little interesting. It could be. It could be boiling hot and cause steam and got to have gloves on. So. Yeah. We, we have to be a little bit more prepared for the blue-green algae test. So, uh, But it needs to be done. And so we got to do it. We're going to do that. Make sure Wes is doing good. Check up on him. Keep rocking and rolling on his fins. How's it going, Bucket Man? It's going. Slowly but surely. Making progress? You got quite a bit done. Hey, get rid of them out in the pasture so you can just put them up all in your barn, right? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody else can cut them for me. Or mill them for me. Okay, so what we're doing now, we are back at the pond after getting after some fence. But uh, we've already done our first a little test that broke down a whole bunch of little tests with our strips. That took like 15 seconds. But now we're going to go ahead and do the blue-green algae test. Maya's having some water, so I guess it's a natural test right here. If, uh, we want to take that approach. But uh, So what I'm going to do is we've got to use this bucket. This is going to be... A little bit more of a difficult, uh, more complex maybe, testing for water. And so um, basically it give us a yes or a no, a thumbs up or thumbs down on this test. We're, we're stepping back into the lab here of high school and college days. So I'm going to get some water in our five gallon bucket here. And then we will start the test right after I get some water. How much do I need? Not the whole thing, but enough to stick your hand in. Okay. We got some... Maybe a little bit of mud, but... You gotta put that glove on. So first you have that little white thing. Mm. Put that over the hand that you're gonna dip in there. So hold it at 45 degrees, the whole thing underwater? Yeah. Bubbling? Mm-hmm. Still bubbling. Uh, it's bubbling. It's okay, take it out, put it in there, and yes. There we go. Now I don't touch it, it's gonna get hot, said. And now we've gotta let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes while the chemical reaction happens and all this steam and water boils inside of that thing and brings out all the hepatoxins. I guess it's a blood poison if there is any in the blue-green algae test. Hey Siri, start a timer for 10 minutes. Uh, so we're on the second half of this test. Uh, the first part was kind of a chemical reaction. Not sure exactly what is in this, but I set it down in the bucket for 15 seconds. It took the water in, then it started bubbling, pulled it out, let it sit here for 15 minutes. It actually got really, really hot. And that's why I think they made this neat little box here with a hole cut in it, is so you could let it sit without it worrying about it falling or anything. So whatever it did inside of there, um, now we're ready to do these drops on uh, the test strip right here to actually see our results. So here it is. We'll find out uh, are we good or bad in this pond. Just a drop or two? Do a couple. 
Well, it says three drops only. Three drops only. All right. Put it down and wait eight minutes. It's already making moves. Our third test is, since Maya was really our first test, she did the first um, really test in the water. Our third is going to be Cole. He's going to drink straight from this bucket that I scooped up. And we're going to see what the results are from that and see how he feels. We're going to give him maybe 15, 20 minutes, and we'll see uh, really just how he feels and how his stomach uh, reacts to it. And then we'll, we'll go from there for our third test. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. We got eight minutes to wait, and then if there is one line, we're in the clear. It's one and line. If there's two lines, and if there's one by the T, we unfortunately have toxins. So it said wait eight full minutes and see what happens. So so far, it only gave us. It already gave us a answer, but in a minute. so at least it's not going to be inconclusive. Yeah, true. It gave us some. Okay. Something. We didn't screw it up yet, basically. I didn't. But so far, one bar in the C. And if it stays like that, that means you're good. There's a happy face. There's a happy face. And then there's a sad face. <laughs> so we want to be the happy face. All right, guys. We have completed both of our uh, water tests. Uh, thanks to Cole for doing a little research and um, some purchasing on... Uh, online to get us a couple of quick tests um, one easy one uh, get a quick answer and another one took a little bit longer but now we know that this pond is in good shape of course i've got about four more ponds i really need to check and make sure that they're all in the clear but now what we're going to do is uh we're going to drive through this pasture we're getting really close to finishing that fence line that i've been working on we've been working on for a long time uh, so we're going to drive through this pasture. I'm still looking for new growth of Johnson grass and I've been finding it and, um, I've actually been spot spraying it and uh, I kind of go back and forth. What's the best thing to do? There's actually not a lot of new growth. The only places that the new growth I'm finding is either that one burnt place, that axle accidental little burn patch from a, from a brush pile burn. And then the other is from our fence lines. And that's easy to, to maintain and spray and take care of and just spray that specific Johnson grass and nothing else. So we're going to drive through the pasture, check for more, uh, any new growth of a Johnson grass. And then we're going to drive the perimeter of the fence just to check it um, one more time. Make sure that there's no major work that needs to be done to the fence. We're getting very close to, uh, to wrapping this whole thing up, which means the Dunbar herd and his cows and the two calves will be out on uh, some new grass for the first time, what I call pastures three and four, um, 40 acre pasture. That's been the goal. That's what I've been grinding on for a while. So we're gonna go out there and start checking that and see, uh, see what we find. We'll catch you out with the uh, Dunbar herd in just a second. just got off the phone with Kevin and uh, he's got a surprise for us with this rain we don't know it what it can bring us we've, we've been talking about rain and drought here lately and it uh, could bring could bring us anything at this point um, dealing with the nitrates and and uh, the toxicity in plants so I don't know what Kevin uh, has got for us but he's got a surprise so um, with that being said we're going to bring that to you next time, guys. Thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned. We'll see you soon.